you know, I can make all the jokes in the world about how bad this Raw was. And how it was the worst Raw of 2015, get it? Because the joke is it's the first Raw of 2015, so that's gonna be also the best one. But, the show wasn't even that good to make that joke. I mean, show. It was the first Raw of 2015, the authorities back in power, Bray Wyatt, Ambrose in the ambulance match. That was all you had coming into this show. And especially with the rumors going around that there was going to be some sort of big angle going into WrestleMania so that now Raw is going to be must-see TV until WrestleMania time. And if the ending to tonight's show was that big angle, WWE better get their damn heads out of their damn asses because you probably just lost a shit ton of viewers off of that. Anyway, you started the show off with John Cena and your entire roster going out there saying he's apologizing for having to bring the authority back. But you did it to save Edge, Edge, because he's a husband and a wife, and or he's yeah, he's a wife and a husband. See how that works? No, he's a husband. Uh, he's a father. He's all sorts of stuff like that, and he just couldn't do that to a friend and all that sort of stuff. So John Cena making excuses for why he brought back the authority, and um, I I said it before and I'll say it again. I was satisfied with the way they they inserted Edge and Christian into the uh, into the storylines. But the way they did it was just kind of so unnatural and everything. And it just felt like it was they were forced in this position so that they could bring the authority back sometime uh, between this point right here and the Royal Rumble so that they have some sort of buildup going into the Rumble. Uh, the authority goes out there and all sorts of stuff like that. Basically, this all you need to know from the first 20 minutes of Raw, besides it being an opening promo, is A, Seth Rollins is now inserted into the John Cena-Brock Lesnar title match at the Royal Rumble, so now it's a triple threat match, and Dolph Ziggler will be facing Bad News Barrett in our first match of the night for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, the first opening minute, I mean, granted, up to this point, Raw was seeming kind of promising. I mean, granted, this is how they've opened up a lot of their shows, but at the end of the day, I mean, the show usually ended up to be average or above average not extremely below like it was tonight um jerry lawler's in the hospital with diverticulitis so now booker t's taking his place and god forbid if if you didn't have a reason to mute your tv because of those three today was probably uh, a good time to dig into that couch cushion and try and find that remote because god awful this commentary was this actually made uh Lawler, Cole, and JBL actually good. You guys know how much I can't stand that commentary. So, um, first match of the night, Bad News Barrett and Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. And the match goes about, what, 30, 45 seconds before Dolph Ziggler rolls up Barrett for the win. And to this point, I'm looking at, like I said, I'm looking at this and going, you've got to be fucking kidding me. They really did not just bring Bad News Barrett back to make him look like a bitch to Dolph Ziggler, to make him look, to make Dolph Ziggler look good. Well, Barrett ends up attacking Dolph Ziggler, and Kane comes out there, and he, it's kind of funny how he kind of goes out there and, and, and fucks up every match, basically. Kane ruins everything. That's the big hashtag going on. And, uh, makes this match a, um, two out of three falls match. And now, uh, Barrett needs two, uh, falls to end up winning the championship but that's exactly what he actually does but um he gets a second fall pretty easily beating up Dolph Ziggler uh after Ziggler ended up getting the win over him and then they had a pretty good outing for about seven eight minutes before uh Barrett ended up getting the win uh with distraction and help from Kane so bad news Barrett is the IC champion yet again for a fifth time and um like I at this point I was not really, I did. I wasn't pleased with the way they did the Dolph Ziggler thing. I felt that that was kind of like a tease to kind of piss people who are Barrett fans off, but they did a pretty good job at rebounding it and bringing Bad News Barrett back into it, and he won the championship. So uh, props to Barrett there. Uh, by the way, I'm Perry the Entertainer. I'm sorry that I didn't do my intro. I just felt that I had to start talking before I lost my mind, and that might happen sometime in this video. You can follow me on Twitter at the PTE Show, uh, which didn't really matter at all because Twitter today was just awful. I think it went out like three different times. I was able to, you know, talk to maybe three or four of my followers, and I wasn't able to see any of your lovely tweets, 
and all sorts of shit like that. So I wasn't able to see any of that. And to make matters worse, I felt like a big egotist because all I saw in my, you know, timeline was just my tweets and it wasn't you guys. So, um, that's that. But my New Year's resolution, well, one of my big New Year's resolutions when it comes to YouTube, I want to stop being so you know, sprinkle frosting on everything and try and make a good case for something that's not, you know what I mean? Like that for, for raw tonight, it was, it was God awful. I mean, but, but the first hour was promising. That's not, you know, that's about as much as I can say about that. Um, more build up to the ambulance match, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes here. Uh, the Ascension beat up two local jobbers. This was fucking pathetic. It was retarded, but it was good uh, exposure for the Ascension. Uh, they cut a promo right before that, saying basically we're not the uh, we're not the Road Warriors and we're not Demolition, which are the two big names being thrown around uh, with this new thing. But it was it was just so stupid because. They look exactly like it. What are they? They're gonna go out on SmackDown and be like, "We do not resemble Kratos from God of War." That'll be all. And then they'll beat up fucking the Bunny and and Justin Gabriel. Oh wait, they're the same person. Anyway, uh, Roman Reigns versus The Big Show is up next. And if two weeks ago wasn't a big snore fest, this was as well. Um, nothing happened here. Um, this Roman Reigns wins by disqualification when Big Show just beats the shit out of him with the, uh, the steps. After the match, uh, Show threw him in the ring and Reigns speared him. They're gonna go about it saying that the stairs landed on top of Big Show's head. I don't know why to do that. Maybe to try and do another stairs match with Reigns and Big Show or something. Maybe they're gonna do that. They're gonna, they're gonna make the steel steps Big Show's signature weapon. You know, like Mick Foley carried the sock around and, and all that sort of shit. Maybe, you know, Sandman carried the fucking Singapore cane going around. Maybe Big Show's going to walk down the ramp with, you know, 250 pounds of steel steps. Because that's what they're trying to say to us. Those steps weigh about 300 pounds, guys. So, you know, don't 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 sugarcoat this at all. You know, that's, that's some serious shit. Um, it's just a filler feud for Roman Reigns going into the Rumble. Um... I still think Roman Reigns is going to end up winning the Rumble, but with the addition now of Daniel Bryan, everything's up in the air. So, um, Nikki Bella versus Natalia was up next. Um, this all was one big fucking Total Divas thing. So, if you guys watched that, I didn't. I watched like the. I think I seriously watched like 15 seconds of it. I was channel surfing last night, and I heard something about. I think. Paige has a crush on Rosa or vice versa or something like that and I immediately went back to TBS and watched the reruns of the Big Bang Theory. That's how fucking stupid I thought that was but uh, I guess they're going to be playing that up now. Uh, something about Natalia and, and weed brownies I guess. Um, Paige I guess turns babyface. I don't know if that's exactly if that's really what happened but um, yeah I really I really don't know what the hell WWE is doing with the Divas division right now. Seems like AJ Lee played a played such a big role in the Divas division that it's just now that she's gone something's just missing you know and maybe it's because WWE didn't really build up a uh, a good a credible baby face to kind of be the secondary to to AJ and now with the the rumors going around that Naomi might turn on the Usos or something like that you know you really don't know and it seems like they're really just forcing Natalia in this position or they're doing the same thing with Paige and now Page is, I guess, a baby face now, and I don't know. I really don't know, but um, maybe that maybe that's what they freaking did wrong. Is they uh, they turned Brie Bella, wrong. they turned Brie too too early or something, or hell, they turned Brie. Period. Um, they didn't go through with the Nikki Brie uh, Divas title match, which is what I thought was going to happen, but uh, eventually didn't. Uh, more build up to the ambulance match: Eric Rowan versus Luke Harper. I said it on Twitter, and I'll say it here because, like I said, Twitter was broken. So, uh, seems like they're just going to go through with having Rowan versus Harper seven, 800 more times until people are finally sick of it so that they don't have to do this anymore. So, now this isn't really a dream match. Oh, Ro uh, Wyatt family member versus Wyatt family member. Oh, wait a minute. We saw them in the ring 400 times in the year 2015. So, why the hell are we going to watch this again? But... Not that it mattered at all because J&J &J Security ended up coming out. And that was the thing. Uh, everyone from Team Cena got some sort of punishment. For example, Dolph Ziggler getting the, the win over Bad News Barrett eventually was put into a 2 out of 3 falls match, which he did not win. Eric Rowan, who was also part of Team Cena, had to face Luke Harper, his former brethren. And with two special guest referees, that being Jamie Noble and 
Uh, Joey Mercury, I almost called him Just Incredible. Uh, JJ Security. And Luke Harper ended up getting the win afterwards. You know, they just kind of beat the hell out of Rowan. All sorts of shit like that. This is basically Cena Appreciation Night. I don't know if that really is matters at all. Apparently, that obviously that's not fan appreciation night because if that be the case, this show would have been fucking enjoyable. Um, the ambulance match between Bray Wyatt and Dean Ambrose again was um nothing really to take away from it. I thought it was an, uh, a pretty okay match. Um, I think they had the good result at the end by having Bray go over. Um, especially have him go into WrestleMania looking strong. Dean Ambrose can bounce back from something like this, whereas I think Bray Wyatt, we're kind of used to something like this, and hell, he's been in this position numerous times where it comes to uh, having to end a feud, and then he's always on the bad side of it. He's always on the losing side. It makes Bray Wyatt seem more dominant. It makes him seem, you know, like more menacing like he originally was supposed to. And if they want to go through with having the Bray Wyatt Undertaker match at WrestleMania 31, which is apparently it's another rumor going around, uh, this is pretty much the time to do it. And I think now with the win over uh, Dean Ambrose in this sort of position, excuse me, I am feeling a little under the weather tonight, um, then right now he probably is in the best uh, position for it. So um, props to Bray Wyatt for being able to uh, keep this feud going. Granted, I don't know exactly what they're feuding over. But uh, I'm interested to see what WWE has planned for Bray Wyatt and what happens for Dean Ambrose at this point. You know, what exactly does WWE have for Dean Ambrose at this point? Uh, maybe another thing with Seth Rollins. Hopefully nothing with, like, Kane or some shit like that. Um, who knows at this point? Uh, so that's that. Uh, we got Naomi and the Usos versus Alicia Fox, Damian Mizdow, and The Miz. They had to have some sort of reason for putting uh, Alicia Fox in this point. And so they aired some backstage clip where apparently, like, Alicia took Naomi's spot on Total Divas. And I guess Naomi's like, oh, okay, whatever. You know, I got my career to focus on. And then Alicia beat the shit out of her. So that's or that's the reason uh, Naomi, or excuse me, uh, Alicia Fox is in this position. You know, team God all the way. Um, Miz ends up getting the victory. Miz, Mizdow, and uh, Alicia Fox ends up getting the victory. That's all you really need to know about that. Nothing about the tag titles. Nothing about that. Uh, Ryback versus Seth Rollins was up next. Eventually, Kane goes out there for punishing Ryback for being on Team Cena. This is put into a handicap match. Ryback versus Seth Rollins and Kane. So, ooh, excuse me. So, um, back and forth a little bit. Nothing too, nothing too noticeable here. I think Kane, like seriously, he looks horrible because I think what he he did one thing. I think where I don't know if Ryback went to throw him out of the ring or if he ended up trying to leave the ring, but he fell on the ground somehow. And if if I watched that match back again, I'd be able to point out exactly what I'm talking about. But he just kind of fell on the floor, and it just seemed like, what the hell are you doing, Kane? Like like you first you fall over the steel steps when when. Uh, Seth Rollins tried to put Randy Orton through the damn steps. And now, here's Kane again, acting like a damn buffoon. And But it didn't matter because they ended up getting their hands raised in victory. Seth Rollins hitting two curb stomps on Kane, excuse me, for the win. And uh, that was that. The next match, uh, Adam Rose and Big E. Uh, anybody really care about this match? Um, Basically, all this match did was... Um, start up a feud for the New Day versus Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. They were dressed up as Rosebuds and beat up Big E right before he was about to get the win over Adam Rose. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe this is the New Day versus Adam Rose, Cesaro, and Tyson Kidd because they don't have absolutely anything to do with Cesaro and Tyson Kidd right now. So why the hell put them in a tag team together? But, uh, I guess it gives the big, the, the big day, the New Day something to do. So uh, that's that. And then the last segment of the night, which almost put me to sleep. But at the same time, I was like, I was interested. I was on the edge of my seat because I'm expecting what all you guys were. I was expecting Sting to show up and, and, and fuck shit up. And that's not what we got. Um, the big angle for WrestleMania, apparently, this, apparently this, is, this is what everyone was so hyped about for tonight. They brought out Ryback, they brought out uh, Rowan, and they brought out Ziggler. And I don't know, this this segment was just flat out just stupid. 
it was and i'm not trying like again i'm not trying to sugarcoat this it was just it it came off as fake and it was just no reason for it the only real thing that i had to take away from this segment was ziggler ryback and rowan now are all fired and it's because of john cena so i don't know if that's the entire storyline for cena going into wrestlemania but i'm not interested like me unless this has something to do with maybe like a ziggler cena thing going in in mania and then have him finally put ziggler over at mania and that's how he becomes his big main event star other than that i'm confused to what wwe is trying to say here like are they trying to are they trying to make Rowan, Ryback, and Ziggler kind of seem like this is all Cena's fault that I'm now fired, I'm not getting paid, I'm not going to be able to support and feed my family and all that stuff? And it's because of John Cena, and that's the that's the whole thing. Are they going to go with having some sort of like three-on-one handicap match at Mania? I don't know. I don't know what WWE is having planned for this. Um, No Sting. That was another thing that I had to take away from this. The... The only mention of Sting in this entire promo was Triple H walking up to Ziggler and saying something like, the only reason you put up the final nail in the, uh, the the authority coffin was because the goofball dressed in paint. Sting. That was it. Like, it was like, there's not even a mention of the guy. Like, let's, let's, let's not forget that, yeah, Ziggler did pin Seth Rollins and put you guys away. But who was the guy that stood in the ring with you for almost a minute and a half to two minutes and laid you out with a scorpion death drop on your last night. But they're going to go on and, and and punish Dolph Ziggler and they're going to go punish Ryback and they're going to go punish uh, Eric Rowan for that. And they're not even going to mention Sting. And he's not going to try calling him out. He's not going to fire him. He's not going to ban him from the arena. And to be honest, that could be a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing, it keeps Sting off TV. So then when he does appear on TV... It's more shock value, and it's like, oh shit, Sting's on TV again. Say what? Let me call up my homeboys. Oh yeah, let's go. Sting, the icon, the vigilante, whatever the fuck we want to call him today. Back on Raw. Holy shit. On TV. I was going to try and rap there. But uh, anyway, that's all I got to say about Raw tonight. I thought it was a piss poor show. Um, I really am not impressed with what WWE has to this point. I'm more so I'm confused to what WWE is trying to say rather than looking forward to seeing what the hell they're actually going to do. I'm just more confused with their current spot right now. So to take away from tonight's Raw, John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins at the Royal Rumble for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, and Eric Rowan all fired because John Cena uh, got him fired. So... Everybody, enjoy your John Cena appreciation night. I'm sure you're going to sleep well tonight here and that. And until next time, I am out till... Uh, until next time, Perry the Entertainer signing out. Peace. I will see you guys for the Season 2 premiere of Hashtag Spoilers tomorrow. Peace.